Hallelujah, Yahweh. Yahweh Barak, you all Israel, house of Israel. You that are scattered around the Olam. Shalom and Ahava be upon you this night. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be before you long, Israel, tonight. But I do want to somewhat um, ride upon the last message that I spoke on. Concerning the tough shepherd. Hallelujah. And what we must be as a people, as a flock, as a herd unto Almighty Yahweh. One of the most important things that we must do. We must shema. We must hear. And hearing is more than you just hearing someone speak something. That's a part of it. But it lies in the obedience of that thing. It lies in the understanding of that thing. It lies in the execution or accomplishing whatever is spoken. Whether it is a commandment or it is an exhortation, we must understand the reason why. Or it's a rebuke, Israel. We must learn to hear. And what are we hearing? What do we listen to? What do we give our undivided attention to? Is it the voice of this flesh? For the flesh, it speaks. It speaks in words, but also speaks much loud, louder in its action. A voice is not only sound, it is also action, Yisra'ya. And you will see that as I get into this message concerning Yisra'ya and the bondage in Mizraim. Yahweh, he spoke unto Yisra'ya not only by Moshe, but also by the actions of Moshe. Do we hear the voice? Do we shema the voice, what Yahweh is doing in this hour? Do we understand what is taking place, Yisrael Yah? Do we understand the reason it's taking place? Do we truly shema the voice of Almighty Yahweh? I want to begin, as most of the time I do, Yisrael Yah, in the beginning of all things, Bereshit, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Because we understand that Yahweh spoke in the beginning, whether it's the beginning of our Muna, of our faith, there was a voice that was spoken unto us, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. But not only that, it was also seen in the actions of others that has the like Imuna of the faith. Have we not all heard, I know we have, the saying that actions speak much louder than words. How do actions speak? Hallelujah. That's one of the things, one of the key things I want us to understand. Action speaks, Yisrael. We must hear, and that hearing is understanding in the Lev and the Levine what Yahweh is doing in this last hour. So he says here that in the beginning, Yahweh created the Shemayams, the heavens, and the Olam, the earth. And the earth being without form and empty, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And we've heard this example many times, Israel. There was darkness, there was void in the earth. Just as there was darkness and a void, and still yet in many of Israel, in many of us, there's still yet a void. Why? Because we have not taken heed to what Yahweh speaks. So yet even in the darkness of this form that we're reading about, in the beginning of all things, when Yahweh created the earth and the Shemayims, there was darkness there. No life, that being no understanding. Nothing was able to grow as we see it now. The herds of the field, the herbs, the trees, and all the things. But yet Yahweh spoke and life, action, happened. Even in the darkness of the things, there was an action. Even in the darkness, there, must, there had to have been and obeying of the voice of Almighty Yahweh. Do we, are we obeying the voice of Almighty Yahweh in this dark hour, Yisrael? For we are truly in an hour that is void of the understanding of Almighty Yahweh. That is void of the knowledge of Yahweh. And even void or understand or Shema understand the moving of the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. But it says here. In verse 2 that the earth being without form. And empty. 
And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the ruah, the breath, the moving of Almighty Yahweh, and the rock of Yahweh moved over the surface of the waters. And Yahweh said, he proclaimed, he spoke, he uttered his voice of life unto this, into this dark place. He said, let there be light. Let there be an understanding of who I am. Let there be an understanding of what I do, my judgment. And what does it say? And there was light. There was understanding. There was knowledge. In those dark places, light came forth. How? Because Yahweh spoke in it. How are we going to rise in this last hour, Yisrael? Actually, I did have another message concerning the light of Yisrael. But I, I want to dig deeper in this message concerning, as many of us say and we sing, concerning Mount Zion, the high place of Almighty Yahweh, the city of Yahweh, the light that shines that every man can see it and it cannot be hid, a place of comfort, a hiding place for Yisrael. That is what Mount Zion represents. And also Yahweh reveals himself in the high places. So I, I will, I'm going to do a more in-depth study, but let us continue in this, and maybe we may continue in this concerning the voices of Yahweh. Because there are seven manifestations of the voices of Yahweh. Do we know that, Israel? Do we know what they are, what they represent? That will be in the next teaching. Hallelujah. Verse 4. And Yahweh, he saw that the light... That it was excellent, it was perfect, it was tough. Why? Because Yahweh, he is excellent. He is perfect, and he is tough. So he spoke, and Yahweh, he saw the light that it was tough, that it was excellent. And Yahweh, he divided the light from the darkness. And Yahweh called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And Yahweh said, let there be a firmament between the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Now, there had to be been light understanding as Yahweh spoke. And there was great understanding. Why? Because even the elements obeyed his every command, his every voice, his every word. Everything lined up just exactly as he spoke in Israel. We must have the light of Yahshua HaMashiach in our lives, Yisrael. Or even the very word that Yahweh speak will not be understood. Hallelujah. So there must be a light. There must be an understanding that we must have as the people of Yisrael. And Yahweh said, let there be a firmament between the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And Yahweh made the firmament and divided the waters which are under the firmament from the waters which are above the firmament. And it was so just as he spoke it. And Yahweh called the firmament Shemayim's in the evening and the morning were the second day. And Yahweh said, let the waters on the Shemayim be gathered together into one place. And let the dry land appear. And what? It was so. Just as Yahweh had commanded Israel. Is it so amongst the house of Israel? What Yahweh commands? What he expects of us? Is it so? Are we accomplishing what Yahweh commands us to do? Are we living our lives without spot or blemish, without sin, without walking against the grain or against the Torah, Yisrael? Let us ask that to ourselves. And it was so. Verse 10. And Yahweh called the dry land Olam, and he called that which was gathered together of the waters and the seas. And Yahweh saw that it was excellent. Yahweh desired us to be an excellent people unto him, Yisrael. He doesn't, he doesn't, he's not going to accept anything less. Why? Because he is perfect. Because he is excellent. And what he speaks, it comes to pass. So even the Amuna, Yisrael, we must have the Amuna of Almighty Yahweh. That as he speaks unto us, that we act, that we do. That which he had commanded us, and he commands us to do, Yisrael. Did he not command each and every one of us to arise this morning? Hallelujah. 
Are we sitting here today, this night, in the body of Almighty Yahweh? Those that are listening by via of live stream, it's not by any cruel incidents that you're listening. Hallelujah. But it's by the ordination. It's by the speaking of Almighty Yahweh. And as I explained also on the last message concerning the sheep, we know that the sheep, they hear the voice of the shepherd. Do they not? And as stranger, they will not follow Israel. Turn me to Yachahana chapter 10, verse 1, as I begin reading Israel. For there are many voices in the land. You listen to the radio stations. There are many channels on the radio. They have what they call satellite radio. So there is much speech. There's much tickling of the ears. Anything you want to hear can be is on the radio, satellite radio. Any type of music you want to hear is on the radio. You can search and scan the dial, and you can basically find anything that fits your taste. But the only taste that we should have is that for the Torah, the Mishvah of Almighty Yahweh. So all the other things that are transpired throughout the Olam conditions of Yahweh, we shouldn't just cast them off. Hallelujah. But we should not be given in to the same spirit that the world is taken by. We should be a people that understand what is taking place by the proclaiming, by the messengers of Almighty Yahweh, by the hearing of his Dabar, and act according so. He said in verse 10 of Yachahana chapter 1, Truly, truly, I say unto you, he that enters in by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up any other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Do we have those that try to enter into the bride of Yahweh, into the house of Yahweh, except through the Mishvah, the Torah, except through the Dabar, the word of Almighty Yahweh? If you do, you're a thief and a robber, the scripture says. It says, chapter 1 of 2 Chronicles, Deha Yerim, chapter 9. Now, O Yahweh, my Abba, let your promises to Dawid, my Abba, be established. For you have made him king over all the people like the dust of the earth of the, and of the earth in multitude. He said, to give me wisdom and knowledge. How do we expect to have the wisdom and the knowledge of Almighty Yahweh if we do not hear, if we do not hearken unto what he is saying, Israel? And we cannot hearken unto the ah or the whole as they instruct us in righteousness, as they instruct us in the way that we must go. The elders as they instruct and as they teach. Why? Because they know the way. The elders, they know the way. They understand the misvah of Yahweh. They understand life in a, in a greater fashion that we, which are the youth, understand. So in order for us to tap into that wisdom and to tap into that knowledge, we must hearken unto what they say. We must hearken unto the Dabar of Yahweh. We must hearken unto the messengers of Almighty Yahweh that we may receive this knowledge and this great wisdom. He said, that, it may go, that I may go out and come in before the people of Almighty Yahweh. For who can judge this people that is so great? Don't you know it's important that we know how to come in and out before the bayad of Almighty Yahweh? How to come in the presence of our, our in the presence of our, our hope, and to leave from the presence, Israel. We think it's not an important thing when we see our ark in the morning, or we disperse from one another, but it must be a, a common unity amongst us all, Israel. We should not have our own um, agenda. Our one agenda should be to walk in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. That's the only agenda there is. And in that agenda lie every walk of life, every example, and everything that we must do, Israel. 
Hallelujah. Yokohana 10, verse 3, as I continue in Yokohana concerning the sheep. He says, to him, the porter opens, the one that is in charge of the gate, the protection of the sheepfold of the herds. And the sheep hear his voice, the voice of the shepherd. And he calls to his own sheep by name. Do you recall me talking about how um, there are many, or there could be more than one type of flock within a herd, but yet each flock knows the voice of that shepherd. And the other shepherd, they will not follow. You can have two or three herds within one flock, all having different shepherds, Israel. But they understand the voice because they grew up hearing the voice. They understand the tone, believe it or not, the pitch. They understand and they realize that. And they're not the only animals that do that. And that's how animals communicate by sound. Whether it's a dolphin, they use echolocation. They understand the, uh, what one is doing, what one is going. They understand what's in front of them even before they see it with their eyes. By, by sound, which is called echolocation. Do we know how to locate Almighty Yahweh? Do we know how to enter into his throne, Yisrael? Do we know how to, to uh, talk to Yah? To send up the Palah unto Almighty Yahweh, that he may answer us, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calls to his own sheep by name. And leads them out. Don't you know Yahweh called us each by name this morning, Israel? For us to get up. Yahweh Sadat, get up. Yeshibi, time for you to get up. Reat Dawi, time to get up. He spoke to each and every one of us this morning by name. Yahweh knows us by name. He knew us even before the foundations of the world were established. Even though the world was without form. And it was dark, yet he knew us, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Do we know him this hour? Do we hear his voice as he speaks unto us, Yisrael? Hallelujah. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, and they know his voice. They know his voice. Do we know the voice of Yahweh, Yisrael? And a stranger, it says in voice, verse 5, they will not follow, but they will flee from him. Do we flee from the things, Yisrael, that do not line up with Torah? That do not line up with the desires of Almighty Yahweh? But he will flee from him, for they know not the voice of the strangers. For this parable... Spoke Yahshua unto them, but they understood not what things that were which he spoke unto them. That just goes to show that those that heard did not understand what was being spoken. They must not have been the sheep of Almighty Yahweh. Is it not so, Yisrael? Do not the sheep hear the voice of the shepherd and a stranger they will not follow? Then say Yahshua again to them, truly, truly, I say to you. I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Don't you know we must hear the voice of Almighty Yahweh, Israel? That we know where to go to find pasture. That we know where to go to find the essence of life that we need to sustain this life and to, to sustain our life in the Amunah, spiritually, Yisrael, that we can walk and stand strong. Even though the enemy tried to come in, as we were singing the song, like a flood, and the winds may blow, yet, even through all that derision and confusion, we can hear the voice of Almighty Yahweh instructing us. Whether or not a pillar of cloud that led Yisrael out of Mizraim. Hallelujah. Was it not a fire by, by night that they are led? Don't you know that those acts were also a voice or an instruction from Almighty Yahweh 
or what path and where to go, Yisrael. Even though, yes, even though the house of Yisrael did not hear the voice of Yahweh, Yahweh spoke unto Moshe. Yet yeah, through Moshe, Yahweh spoke unto the house, but not only through him, but also by the signs that Yahweh did. Open the, the sea that Yisrael could pass through safely. I don't believe there was a drop of water on their clothing. I don't believe that even the mud was stuck to their feet or to their, their sandals, Yisrael. I believe they walked through, as the scripture said, on dry, on dry shot. Hallelujah. But they had to adhere, they had to hear the voice of Moshe and also moved by the Ruach of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says in verse 10 of chapter 10, the thieves come not but to steal. Don't you know Satan comes in the same spirit? That's the spirit of Satan. To kill, to steal, and to destroy Israel. Therefore, the thief comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, the voice of Yahweh, have come that they might have life and that they might have life more abundantly. More abundantly, Yisrael. That's what Yahweh desires for the house. That's what Yahweh desires for his people. To have life, the high of Yahweh, and to have it more abundantly. Are we experiencing the high of Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael? I don't know about you, but I am. Hallelujah. His Torah, his mitzvah, working in my life. I can see it, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And I understand what Yahweh is doing. He's preparing us to enter into his Melkut, his kingdom, Yisrael. And there's no other way, there's no other preparation but by listening, by hearing, by obeying, by shemaking the voice of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. If you would, turn with me to Gileana, Revelations chapter 4, verse 5. Concerning the voices of the voice. Hallelujah. The voice of the Melikim, the voice of Yahweh. Do you understand when... We have Ah, we have Rayak speak. When there are those that carry the oracles of Almighty Yahweh, his misfire and they live. Hallelujah. They're speaking by the Amunah of Yah. They're speaking by the Dabar of Almighty Yahweh. Just as Yahshua, he said that he did not speak anything of himself, but he spoke that which was given to him by Almighty Yahweh. So we must understand what we are hearing Yisrael, whether it's the voice of Yahweh, whether it's the voice of the enemy, whether it's a malak of Almighty Yahweh sent by Yahweh with the Torah in his lips. Hallelujah. We must be a people that, under, that are able to discern what we hear and what voice we should follow Yisrael. It says in Gileon, Revelation chapter 4, verse 5, that out of the throne, the throne of Yahweh, the high place of Almighty Yahweh. Lightnings and thunderings, and it says, and voices. Voices. The sounds, the voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven ruach of Almighty Yahweh. Not only are there seven ruach of Almighty Yahweh, but there's also seven manifestations of the voice of Almighty Yahweh. I want to move up. Because I want to read, I read that to establish, Yisrael, the voices. Not just a voice, but the voices. And we will move up to verse 1 of the same chapter in Gileana, chapter 4. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in the Shemayim. And the first voice which I heard was as it was of a shofar talking with me the first voice but you know there are more than just one voice Yisrael, that Yah, by which Yahweh speaks by which Yahweh proclaims his mitzvah his commandments which said come up hither and I will show you things which must be hereafter a voice of prophecy speaking from the Shemayim through the, uh, from the throne of almighty Yahweh this first verse Ver, this first voice, Yisrael. Do we hear the first voice of Almighty Yahweh speaking unto us in this hour? Hallelujah. To come up higher, Yisrael. Come up out of the valley. Come out from the low places. 
Stop looking down, but to look up from where your redemption, it draw us nigh, Yisrael. Verse 2, and he says, and immediately, after hearing this first voice, immediately, he says, I was in the Ruah. We hear the voice of, Yisrael, of Yahweh, Yisrael. Do we immediately move in the Ruah of Almighty Yahweh? Or do we run? Do we find shelter? Are we afraid of the voice of Almighty Yahweh? When he spoke to Yisrael in the mountains, Yisrael was afraid. They said unto Moshe, no, you go up and speak to, uh, to Yah. And, and let us stay down here, lest we be consumed. We must hear the voice of Yahweh, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We must hear his voice, his Ruah. He said, immediately I was in the Ruah. And behold, a throne was set up in the Shemahims, and one sat on that throne. And he that sat was look up. I'm sorry. And he that sat was to look up like a jasper and a sardine stone, precious stones. And not only that, they're very hard stones, Israel. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in the sight like as an emerald. So even as he looked up into the Shemayims at this one that sat on the throne, he had a statue and a presence about him that was excellent, that was pure, but also it was a hard and a serious countenance, Yisrael. See, immediately we heard, when he heard that first voice, he moved in the Ruach, HaKodesh. How are we moving, Yisrael? We hear the voice of Almighty Yahweh speaking unto us. Do we move quickly in the rock of Almighty Yahweh? Or do we, do we find ourselves turning and running in the opposite direction? Hallelujah. Turn me to Shema Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. I want to begin reading. Hallelujah. It says in Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Now Moshe, he kept the flock of Yathro, his father-in-law, a flock, Israel. And the Kohen of Media. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert. There was a purpose for this, Israel. Are we not the flock? Are we not the herd of Almighty Yahweh? And it came to the mountain of Almighty Yahweh, even to Horeb. And the Malach of Yahweh appeared unto him in the flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire. So he's watching this bush. He sees this bush that is burning. Somewhat charred, but it's, yet it's not being consumed. And the bush was not consumed. Do we know what this bush represents? Israel. It's not the Torah of Yahweh like a burning fire. The should it not burn in our bones, Israel. Hallelujah. That we cannot be still. But the bush was not consumed. And Moshe said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. It was a great sight. It was a great thing in his eyes to see this bush burning, but not being consumed. Why the bush is not burned? Verse 4, and when Yahweh saw the turning aside, saw Moshe turning aside to see, Yahweh, he called. He called, uh, he called unto Moshe. He beckoned unto Moshe. He called him by his name. He knew exactly who Moshe was, Israel. He knew Moshe. So he, Kara, he called unto him. Out of the bush and said, Moshe, Moshe. And he said, Moshe answered back and said, Here I am. Do we hear the voice of Yahweh calling unto us, Israel? Out of his Torah, out of the fire, hallelujah, of his mishvah. Have we not prayed or do we not pray that the coal from the Shemayims, from the throne of Almighty Yahweh, will rest upon our lips, Israel? 
that we may speak the Torah of Almighty Yahweh with fire, understanding the pending judgment of Almighty Yahweh and what Yahweh requires Israel. And he said, draw not nigh hither, but put off your shoes from off of your feet, for the place wherein you stand is Kodesh ground. Moreover, he said, he said, he Amar, he spoke unto Moshe, saying, I am Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of your Avat, of your father. Here is Yahweh somewhat introducing himself unto Moshe, exclaiming to Moshe who the one is that speaks unto him, that's proclaiming unto him. He said, I am the sovereign ruler of Abraham and of Yitzhak, the sovereign ruler of Yaakov. And Moshe, he hid his face. He hid his face from this burning bush. For he was afraid to look upon Yahweh. Are we afraid to look upon Yahweh? Are we afraid to look upon his Torah, his Mishvah, this burning book, Yisrael Yah? Do we find ourselves running from the Torah of Yahweh? The book, the Mishvah sits there. Seldom do we open it. We don't want to open it. We don't want to look at it. Because when you read, what's the first thing that happens? Judgment. Judgment. The fire. The fire gets a hold to you. So we find ourselves, Yisrael Yah, turning our faces from the mystery of Almighty Yahweh. We find ourselves turning away from the voice of Almighty Yahweh as he speaks unto us, as he calls us by name, Yisrael Yah. Verse 7. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, in Mizraim, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I have come down to deliver them out of the land of Mizraim, and to bring them out of the land to an excellent land and a large place, a large place, Israel, to the land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. All that land Yahweh desired the house of Israel to possess. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the son of Israel has come up to me. I have heard their cry. I have heard their wailing by the taskmasters that are um, incurring much work upon them. Task that is almost unbearable by before man. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians has oppressed them. And he says, come now therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you might bring forth my people, the sons of Israel, out of Mizraim. Sure. Yahweh is pro- proclaiming all this unto Moshe. His purpose and what he desires him to do concerning him and also the house of Israel. And Moshe said unto Yahweh, who am I? Who are we, Yisrael, that Yahweh should speak unto us? That he should choose us out of so many to be his people? Those that carry his word, that carry this message of shalom throughout the generations? Moshe said, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh? That I should bring forth the sons of Yisrael out of Mizraim? And Yahweh said, Certainly, I will be with you. Do we believe Yahweh is with us, Yisrael? Yeah. Do we believe the Torah of Yahweh is written in all of them in our hearts, that he is with us? Everywhere that we go, was there what not an old song to take, take Yahshua with you everywhere you go? Hallelujah. That's what Yahweh desires of us. Hallelujah. And this shall be a token to you that I have sent you. When you have brought forth the people out of Mizraim, you shall serve Yahweh upon this mountain, the high place, a place of safety. That is what the Torah of Yahweh should be unto us, Yisrael, a place of safety where we can run to, Mount Zion. And Moshe said unto Yahweh, Behold, when I come unto the sons of Yisrael and say, What should I say unto them? Yahweh of your fathers has sent me to you. He was in a dilemma. He didn't know what to say to the people. 
how to approach the people concerning what Yahweh has spoken unto him. And they shall say to me, what is his name? What is his shame? What is his name? What shall I speak unto them? Abba Yahweh. What shall I say unto them? Verse 14. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, I am that I am. What, what was Yahweh saying here? Was he saying that, tell them my name is I am that I am? Or I am that is my name? See, we must understand, Yisrael, Yahweh dealt with the house of Yisrael even before they was brought in, into captivity. So there was elders, there was those amongst the house that heard of the name. They knew the name of Yahweh that was spoken. There were those that still walked in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, that understood the mystery of Yahweh. They knew his name. So when Moshe, when he said, go unto them and said that I am that I am, the people of the house of Israel automatically, automatically know that it is Almighty Yahweh. Not the name of any other God. Not that they was in the dark concerning his name. They knew his name, Israel. So he said, just go unto them and just tell them, say to them, I am that I am. Thus shall you say to the sons of Israel. Why? Because they know who I am. When you speak unto them, they will know me. He said, I am has sent me to you. Almighty Yahweh has sent me to you. And Yahweh said moreover to Moshe, thus shall you say to the sons of Israel, Yahweh the sovereign ruler of your avats or your fathers, and of Abram, Yitzhak, the sovereign ruler of Jacob, have sent me to you. He said, this is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. What is his name? Verse 16. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of your avats. They knew Yahweh. They knew Yahweh. They knew the reason why they was in Mizraim. Because they did not walk in the debar of Yahweh. They cast his Torah to the side. They, not, they did not continue to listen uh, to what the elders would say through the anointed ones of Almighty Yahweh unto the congregation. They walked in their own way, so Yahweh put them into bondage. This was Yahweh's judgment to the house of Israel because they did not walk in the Torah, the Mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh. He said, I'm the ruler of your fathers, the sovereign ruler of Abraham, Yitzhak, and of Yaakov, saying, I have surely visited to you, visit you and seen which is done unto you in Mizraim. And I have said, I will bring you up out of that affliction of Mizraim. Is not Yahweh doing this in this hour? Bring us out of the affliction of Mizraim. Hallelujah. Bring us out of this place of bondage, this captivity. To the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The land flowing with milk and with honey. Let me move down to verse 19. He said, I am sure that the king of Egypt, of Mizraim, will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I would do in the midst of them. And after that, he will let you go. Verse 21. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. Have Yahweh left us empty, Israel? Hallelujah. Did Yahshua leave us empty? Did he not say, I will send a comforter? Hallelujah. Verse 22. But every woman shall borrow of a neighbor and of her that sojourns in the house, jewels of silver and jewels of gold, raiment. And you shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and you shall spoil the Egyptians. Exodus, I'm going to go to chapter 4, verse 1. This is concerning Moshe again, speaking unto Almighty Yahweh. And this is one of the things that I was speaking about when I first started this message, concerning the voice of Yahweh. It's more than just us hearing, but it's also, Yisrael, us seeing. 
We must be a people that hear and a people that have the foresight to see Israel. Because actions speak louder than words. Hallelujah. And Moshe answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me nor hearken to my voice. For they will say, Yahweh has not appeared unto you. There's no way you could see, have seen Yahweh. He's not spoken unto us elders in many, many years. Why is at this time he's speaking unto you, Moshe? And Yahweh said to him, what is in your hand? What are you carrying in your hand, Moshe? And Moshe said, a rod. I'm carrying a rod. Now, one thing about a rod, Yisrael, or the staff, it has great implications in the Torah. It's a symbol of strength. It's a symbol also of bearing up one. And it also symbolizes um, also the tribes of Yisrael. Hallelujah. Uh, tribes that are strong, that stand, that stand in the Torah, that do not waver, that lean on the Torah of Yahweh, that depend on the Torah of Yahweh at all times. So he asked Moshe, what is that in your hand? And Moshe said, it is a rod. He told Moshe to cast it to the ground. Cast this rod to the ground. The rod also being the Mishvah, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Yahshua HaMashiach. He said to cast it to the ground, and he cast it to the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moshe took his time, and he moved. He did what? Well, what is fleeting? He ran? I, I would have ran too. He cast the rod down to the ground, and it became a snake, a serpent. How many of you have ever ran up on a snake, did not see, and all of a sudden it was there? The first thing you do is get out of the way. Why? Because it could be a poisonous snake. It could be a viper. Hallelujah. So Moshe, he ran from the staff. Do we find ourselves running from the staff, Israel? Running for the Mishpah, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Did I not speak earlier concerning the burning bush, how he turned his face? From the bush, Yisrael, do we find ourselves running from the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? Hallelujah. Yeah. This example is also foretelling of Yahshua HaMashiach being cast to the earth and then rising again, Yisrael. Did he, did he not rise up with the power of death in his hand? So the grave, it, it didn't have any more victory, did it? Hallelujah. So Yahshua rose up with the, even the power of death held in the grave in his hand. So he told Moshe to cast it to the ground, and he cast it to the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moshe, he ran, he fled from it. He got from it as quickly as he could. And Yahweh said to Moshe, put forth your hand. Can you see that being a hard thing to do, to put forth your hand to a serpent? How many of us are willing to touch a snake? But he commanded Moshe to put forth his hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. Yahweh wants us to take hold of this, this state, this staff, Yisrael. We must take hold of it because it bears us up. It keeps us. Did not, did not did Dawi say that his rod, that the, the rod and the staff of Yahweh, it comforts him? Hallelujah. It comforts him. It keeps him. Reassurance. It provides him with reassurance. Leads him in the way that he must go. When he had no other one to lean on to bear him up, he depended upon the staff. The staff is also an instrument that is used to well or to, to beat or to punish. The Torah of Yahweh, we do not walk in the Torah of Yahweh, then the judgments of Yahweh rest upon us as a house, Yisrael. So he took upon this rod and it became, he took upon the serpent, he called it, and it became a rod in his hand, verse 5. That they may believe that Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of the Avaz, the sovereign ruler of Abram, the sovereign ruler of Yitzhak, and the ruler of Yaakov, has appeared unto you. So this sign was a type of voice, even unto the people of Yisrael. 
If they did not hear the voice of Moshe when he spoke that Yahweh has sent me, Yahweh said, okay, do this. Let us move on. Verse 6. And Yahweh said, furthermore unto him, put now your hand into your bosom, close to you. And he put his hand to his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. It was white as snow. We know that leprosy in those times was a, a disease, a flesh-eating disease, a cancer. It's disease, Israel. And he said, put your hand into your bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again. And he plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it had turned again his, as his other flesh. So it returned back no more again, Israel. He said this in verse 8. And it shall come to pass that, and it shall come to pass, if they will not believe you, nor hearken unto the voice, cold, the voice. Not only can it be expressed as all or the whole, but also as the voice. The voice. Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe you, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will not believe the voice of the latter sign. So even in these signs, as, as Yah is expressed in verse 8, if they did not hear the voice of the first sign, which the first sign being the stake being cast down, and them seeing the serpent, he said, well, I want you to put your hand into your bosom and show them the hand that is leprous as being the second sign or the second voice unto them if they did not hearken unto the first. So we find these acts that Yahweh had commanded Moshe to do were not just acts, but it was also a voice to speak unto the house of Israel that they may obey the commandments that should come forth out of the mouth of Moshe. And it shall come to pass that if they not believe these two signs, neither hearken unto your voice, that you shall take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land. And the water which you take out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. What is it going to take in this hour, Yisrael, for us to walk in the midst of our Almighty Yahweh, to hear the messengers? To hear the Zalkain. To hear those that Yahweh have placed in the midst. Why? What is the purpose? That we may be saved, Israel. That we may be preserved by this state, by this staff. Yahshua HaMashiach. There's no other way we're going to be preserved. There's no other way we're going to be kept in this hour, Israel. As soon as you close your ears, or Yah close your ears, then death is immediate. Separation is immediate, Israel. So let us hearken unto the voice of Almighty Yahweh. Well, what is that voice that you keep speaking of, Zakin Yeramiah? It is simply his Torah. We run from it. We try to hide from it. When we should take hold of it, Israel. We treat it as if it's a poisonous thing. But it's only a poisonous thing to those that do not walk accordingly. To those that try to change the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Did he not say those that alter? Or try to change the Torah that these curses and things shall come upon them. So let us, Israel, walk in the Torah. Because it is our staff. As I was doing this study, I, I read that, that even in the old days when they would try to preserve bread, they would put it on a staff. That it stand, you know, free amongst the shelves, you know, away from the shelf. They just take it and stick it on a stake. So that the mice would not consume it. Or make it hard for the mice to get to it. But you know, the staff of Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh has praised this living bread. Hallelujah. It's not for everyone, but it's only for the house of Yisrael yeah. to take hold, to eat. That we may be sustained in this last hour, Yisrael. Yeah. So let us hearken. Let us take heed. Let us shema. Let us hear what the Ruah is saying in this last hour. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn with me to 
you, you may not have this. She's right, y'all. Enoch, chapter 40, verse 1. Concerning the voices that he heard out of the Shemayims from the throne of Almighty Yahweh. Now, these are concerning the four voices of the four Melikim, I believe, in, in Mizra, in, um, in Revelations. Hallelujah. He says in chapter 40 of Enoch, verse 1, he said, And after that, I saw a hundred thousand times a hundred thousand, ten million times ten million, an innumerable and uncountable multitude who stand before the splendor of Almighty Yahweh of hosts. I saw them standing on the four wings of Yahweh of hosts and saw four of their faces among who do not slumber. And I came to know their names, which the Malak who came with me revealed to me. And he said also, and he also showed me all the hidden things, the mysteries. And I heard the voices of those four faces while they were saying praises before Almighty Yahweh of splendor. He says the first voice was blessing. The name of Yahweh of hosts. Did I not talk about the first voice when I begun this? Esteeming Almighty Yahweh, this Melikim, esteeming the Torah of Yah. The first voice was blessings in the name of Yahweh of hosts. Do we have that first voice, Israel? Yah? Don't you know that Yahweh has given us a voice of praise, a voice of blessing, yes. hallelujah, to his mighty name? Yeah. And the second voice I heard, Blessing the elect one and the elect ones who are clinging unto Yahweh of hosts. Don't you want to be there, Yisrael? Yeah. Clinging unto Almighty Yahweh, sitting on the throne of Almighty Yahweh. And the third voice I heard, interceding and praying, sending out Pilah on behalf of those who dwell upon the earth and supplication in the name, as you notice the repetition of the name of Almighty Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh of hosts, and the fourth voice which I heard, expelling the demons and forbidding them for coming unto, into the presence of Almighty Yahweh of hosts in order to accuse those who dwell upon the Olam. Do we not recall? And yo, Satan, when the sons of Yahweh came to present themselves, he came to accuse. He came to accuse yo, the conditions of Almighty Yahweh. Let you know that's representation of the house of Israel. Yah. So there's a voice that goes out before the throne of Yah. What pleading mercies unto Yahweh, that the hedge was not a hedge around about yo. Hallelujah. This same hedge has been set amongst the house of Israel, yeah. and yet there is a voice proclaiming this, hallelujah, that the protection of Yahweh would be round about us, Israel. Yeah. And he says after, and after that I asked him a lot of Shalom, who was going with me and showed me everything that was hidden. Who are these four faces which I have seen, and whose voices have I heard and written down? And he said unto me, the first one is the merciful and forbearing Malachi. And the second one, who is set over all disease and every room of the children of the people, the people of Almighty Yahweh, is Raphael. And the third, who is set over all exercise of strength, is Gabriel. And the fourth who is set over all actions of repentance unto the hope of those who are inherited or have inherited eternal life is Fano by name. So those were the four faces of the, of the Melikim and the four verse, ver, voices that he heard, Yisrael. So there is a voice, there is a cry continually around the throne of Almighty Yahweh. And these are his formelikim. They are of Yahweh of hosts. 
And there are four voices which I heard in those days. And we know in those days, the days of judgment, Israel. Yah. We always shall open the floodgates of the Shemayams. Hallelujah. Upon this earth, Israel. Yah. But yet there is one voice above all those voices that we must hear. And that is the voice of Yahshua HaMashiach. For he speaks, and he still yet speaks unto us, Yisrael. So we must hearken. Let us hear what the Ruach ha- the HaKadosh is saying unto the house. Hallelujah. As I bring this message to a close tonight, Yisrael, I do hope you're able to garner just a little something concerning the voices and the voice of Yahweh. And yet when I come back, I will exclaim a quote, a concerning the seven voices of Almighty Yahweh. Um, but before I do, I do want to read this account in Yo. Um, that is spoken by Elihu concerning the voice of Almighty Yahweh, how he speaks, the thunderings, the lightnings, how he speaks through those things, Israel. Yah. See, the voice of Yah is all around us. Hallelujah. And what we see, what we see, take, you know, transpiring in the world, Israel. Yah. But we must have the ears to hear and the mind to perceive what he is doing in these last days. It says in Job chapter 37, verse 1, this is Elihu uh, speaking. He said, at this time, my heart trembles and is moved out of its place. Hear attentively the noise of his voice. He said, I listen attentively. I take heed. I'm moved by the voice of Almighty Yahweh. And the sound that goes forth out of his mouth. He directs it under the whole Shemayims and his lightnings to the ends of the earth, Yisrael. He said, Yahweh thunders. Have we not experienced thunders? The loudness, the quaking of it. Does it cause you to be moved out of your place, out of your element at that present time, your thoughts? It, it does me. My mind could be in another place thinking, but that, that loud, the banging and the thundering. It, 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 it gives you a sense of awe, Yisrael. You just stop what you're doing and you're some, somewhat listening to the thunder. He said, Yahweh thunders marvelously with his voice. Great things does he, which we cannot comprehend. For he saith to the snow, be you on the earth. Likewise, the small rain, isn't that something? Even the small rain? Obeying the voice of Almighty Yahweh. And to the great reign of his strength. He seals up the hand of every Adam. Of every man. And all men may know his work. Then the beasts go into their dens and remain in their places. You see even the animals. When there's thunder and lightning. There's a storm brushing up. They even stop what they're doing. They look for shelter. They look for a place to go out of the storm. Verse 9. He said, out of the south comes the whirlwind and the cold out of the north. By the breath of almighty Yahweh, frost is given. And the breath of the waters is straightened. Also by the watering, he wearies the thick clouds. He scatters his bright clouds. And it is turned round about by his counsel. So everything obeys the voice of Almighty Yahweh. That they may do whatsoever he commands them upon the face of the world and on the earth. He causes it to come, whether for correction or for his land or for mercy. See, this is Elihu proclaiming this unto Yod. Concerning the voice of Almighty Yahweh. That even in the midst of the thunderings and the lightning, we can, fi- we can find the comfort. But we need to shema, we need to hear. We need to be able to recognize the voice of Yahweh in all these things, Yisrael. Verse 14. He said, hearken to this, O Eo, stand still. This is the type of Yisrael, yo. We need to stand still, Yisrael. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of Almighty Yahweh. Do you know when Yahweh 
disposes them and causes the light of his clouds to shine? Do you know the balances of the clouds? Do you know the weight? Do you know the wonders of his works to him which is perfect in knowledge? How your garments are worn when he quiets the earth by the snow, by the south wind. Have you with him spread out the sky, which is strong and is molten looking as glass? Were we with Yahweh when he created the, the Shemayims and the Olim Yisrael? He says in verse 19, teach us what we should say to him. Tell us. For we cannot order our speech by reason of darkness. Our ways are so far from Yahweh. Our understanding is so far from Almighty Yahweh. Shall it be told to him, I speak. If a man speak, surely he shall be swallowed up. And now men, see not the bright light which is in the clouds, but the wind that passes and cleanses them. Golden splendor comes forth out of the north. Yahweh is awesome. In his grandeur. Touching Yahweh Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent in power and in judgment and plenteous in justice. He will not afflict. Men do therefore fear him. He respects not any that are wise of Leah, Israel. Do we think we're wise of Leah? Don't you know that Yahweh, his ways are high above our ways and his thoughts above our thoughts, Israel. That's why it's important for us to shema, to hear, to take heed unto what the messenger is saying unto Israel. We must understand in this, in this hour there's so many voices and so many sounds and it's a wind of them. We can be taken, Israel, if we don't abide. If we're not firmly rooted and grounded in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, these winds will take us. These many voices will take us. Well, it's hard to discern who's speaking the truth. Well, we must walk in the Ruah of Almighty Yahweh. One thing specific that the Torah of Yahweh will always do, it will judge us. It will show us our intent. It will show us the filthiness that lies within our bosom. Everything that's not of Almighty Yahweh must come to the top. It must be purged. By the fire of Almighty Yahweh, the dross will come up. Just ask pure gold. Gold tried in the fire seven times. Everything that is in the gold that is unpure, it rises to the top. Well, where are the gold, Yisrael? So let's allow the fire of the Torah of Yahweh to purge us and to cleanse us of the dross and everything that is not of him. And let us hear the voice of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh Barak, you Israel. Hallelujah. When I stand before you again, and next time I will bring forth the message, or continue, finish this, and explain unto you the seven voices of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh speaks to us, yeah, Israel. Hallelujah. Continuously. Even now, even when you're asleep, and you don't even know it, he is speaking to you. Every breath you take is from Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. And we find our life in Him. Hallelujah. Let's stand up to our feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even He speaks to us in the weather. You know when you walk out there immediately, it's cold. And He lets you know that it is cold, Yisrael. So I told Yahweh for the warmth of the homes and the houses, for the wood, Hallelujah. Let us remember those that are struggling in these times that the immune of Yahweh, that the Ahava Yahweh will rest upon them. Hallelujah. Almighty Yahweh, we do barak you for this night. We barak you for the word that went forth on this night, that we may take heed, that we may listen, that we may hear the voice as you speak unto us, Yahweh. For you speak unto us that we may be delivered. That is your desire for your house, is to be delivered, Abba Yahweh. So in all things we do barak you. In the mighty name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, touch all those that are listening by via of live stream. Take the Zarkane and his Isha home safely. Those that have joined us, that they may have beautiful rest on tonight, Yahweh. For you give your beloved rest. In all things we do barak you. In the mighty and precious name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, we do cry out. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 